It's a little stiff, but we can definitely, uh, hold on. I said definitely, there we go, ow. I'm back and today I'm going to be checking out band number two from Rainbow Vision aka Neon Shadow. I don't know why I did this like some magic script is going to come out. I'm going to keep doing it just in case my husband can pop one in somehow. Neon Shadow. Or I'm looking like a complete and utter idiot. So I mean that's the most likely but we'll see. We'll see. But anyways we've already checked out the Rainbow Divas but today things are going to get a little bit more mischievous. Not really though because if you think about it it's kind of as though Shadow High was painted to be this bad attitude type school, but realistically, the majority of people there, excluding the Storm Twins, are pretty nice. They're just a little darker appearance-wise, but whatever. Today, we're going to be checking out Neon Shadow and their three bandmates, like this green Harley Limestone. Can we even see her there? Mara Pinkett, who really likes pink, as if you didn't see that coming. And finally, Uma Van Hoos. Van Hoos? Van Hoos. Van Houten. I don't know what's going on with me today. Everything I say sounds incorrect. Is it Van Hoos? Van Hoos. <laughs> We're done. Anyway, she's blue. All right, now it's time to switch down to the table and see what each of these ladies comes with. But first, can I just say, and I know I say this a lot, we need more male characters, but why didn't they include a male character in a band yet? Like, I know we had Aiden singing terribly, but why can't we just have a band that is, you know, co-ed? That would have been great. But since we don't, let's just see what these ladies come with. Starting with a super quick look at the packaging, we have all three dolls in the center of their boxes with their names in the top left corner, the Shadow High logo along the right side, and Rainbow Vision written across the bottom. The right side of each doll has their second outfit along with her new shoes, and her accessories will be on the left. So Harley has a microphone and an amp, Mara comes with a drum kit, and Uma has an instrument in a case. All three girls have the exact same focus, which is of course music. And on the back, we have some gorgeous artwork showing the girls rocking out on stage under a sign that says Neon Shadow. The world famous Rainbow Vision music competition is heating up and the rocking girls of Neon Shadow have their eyes on the prize. Okay, so I've got all three of our new bandmates out of their boxes. I've got them on their stands and I have to say they look really cool together. To be honest, I initially only wanted Uma and then I I started to fall in love with Mara, and I wasn't really interested in Harley at all, but I did love her fashion and accessories. But now that she's out of the box, she's kind of growing on me. So of course, as you would expect, each doll comes with the exact same comb and doll stand, complete with little studs and the Shadow High monogram in whatever color complements the doll's theme. So that would be green for Harley, pink for Mara, and blue for Uma. And to my great delight, I don't know why, but I'm not going to question it, they came with hangers! It's been been so long. Wait, why didn't the divas though? That's so strange. I don't know, but like I said, not gonna question it. So we have both a regular hanger, so we can hang dresses, coats, and the like, and it says shadow in fancy writing, and then a clippy hanger to hold on to pants or skirts, with an S and H on both sides. For their accessories, Harley comes with a black mic stand covered in silver studs along the bottom with a black pleather scarf tied around the top. And it's covered in silver studs and has this really cool shifting holographic tint to it. And a green microphone on top. It says shadow along the side written in white. And this is removable from the actual mic stand. There's a little handle here where we can stick it right on Harley's hand. Now the microphone itself is not the worst thing that I've ever seen but the section where the top is attached to the actual body of the mic looks like it's gonna fall off on me. So I'm probably gonna add some glue to that when I get a chance. And unfortunately, the black cord that attaches the microphone to the amp, very cool might I add, is really ugly around the middle section here. Like all the loops have kind of pulled out and you would think it doesn't really matter, but it kind of does. Cause it's not like you can just snip this and fix it because that would just make it fall apart faster. So that kind of bums me out. But other than that, it is really cool. And like I said, we can attach it directly to her amp just here beside the knobs. So we got a little black switch, a big speaker on the front that says SH in the center, the word shadow, and a ton of little silver studs all over. And on top, there's a green handle that says shadow in black. 
Mara comes with a silver, white, and neon pink drum kit, and it's pretty much the exact same as the one that came with Vanessa Tempo, just different colors. So we've got a pretty cool image of a cat on the front here. It's black and white with some pink sections for the clothes, shoes, bracelets, and hair. It says shadow on top and has some Japanese writing along the side. And then we've got the little kick pedal. I'm not really sure what it's called because I don't play instruments. I'm not that cool, unfortunately. I love that I can attach it directly to the drum kit and that if you push down it kind of moves and bangs. Oh, and we can't forget that she's also got some silver drumsticks attached to her hands. And for Uma's accessories, we've got a black and silver electric guitar. It's got a long silver neck and painted strings and frets and knobs and some blue lightning painted on the front. And the guitar strap is actually really cool. So it attaches with these big plastic silver pieces, but the ribbon they used is actually awesome. Like, don't make fun, okay? You guys know how I get about cool details. So it's a black ribbon that has a color shift of blue to purpley dark blue, and then some silver stripes and writing to say shadow with little moons. Like, right? That's so awesome. And I'm noticing a small hole at the bottom. So now I'm wondering if Harley's mic can fit in it. Like, how cool would that be? Hold on, we're gonna find out. Maybe this has been done by other people. I don't know, but I need to know for myself. So here we go. It fits! Oh, but it falls out! I mean, if we add a small piece of sticky tack or something to it to thicken it up a bit, it could totally work! Hey girl, hey! So it's not really practical since she would need both of her hands. However, it does fit if it didn't keep falling out. So now I kinda wanna get something else that's similar to this or try to make my own and have this piece on both ends. That way I could connect one to the guitar and the other to the amp. And then it would look like Uma's rocking out. Like that would be awesome, but it's not the case. So for now, I'll just give Harley back her mic. And finally, so that she can actually tote this beast around, she's got an instrument case which is all black with silver painted details for the buckles and hinges and whatnot, plus a blue handle just to keep the theme going. It's a little stiff, but we can definitely, uh, hold on, I said definitely, there we go, ow, we can definitely open it up. Let's see if her guitar fits. I just got it back in her hands, but oh well, it's science. I get nervous because I don't want the actual little pegs to break. Goodness, ah, it's stuck in her hair, ah, the curls are getting worse. Oh, it broke. No, 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 no. I knew that was gonna happen. This one did not fit. <sighs> okay, well, to be fair, that was me that pulled it, but this side has a bigger space than this one, so it didn't fit. Ah, uh, okay, I'm just gonna replace that with my own small screw or something, which will, in the end, last a lot longer anyways. So if you buy Uma, just be mindful of these small pieces. I literally just said I didn't want it to break, and what happened? I should have just left it on her body. Ugh, live and learn. Anyways. It definitely fits inside the case, which is fantastic. And once I fix up the little pegs, I'll be able to attach it back to her body. But it's gonna bug me if I don't do it now, so we're gonna need some tools. Let's see what we've got in here, shall we? So I've got some super glue, a miniature Phillips head screwdriver, because of course everything is doll sized and tiny here, and some screws, which are hopefully gonna be similar enough in size to work. Looks like we've got a winner, and I'm not too concerned that it's longer because I'm gonna use a drill and small drill bit to get rid of the leftover piece stuck inside, and somehow I'm gonna manage all of this from around the camera. This could go very, very badly. I'm also gonna use a little emery board with a piece of paper towel because I have sensory issues and can't touch this. To file it down as I go. That way I can have a clean view of what I'm drilling and not accidentally ruin anything. All right, so it totally worked. I'm gonna go in again and very gently rotate around the sides to make the hole just a bit bigger. There you go, that looks good. And now I'm gonna test my screw. You know what? This might actually fit in as is if I screw it in very slowly and gently, like without super glue. That's awesome. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Ooh, that looks good. Guys, are you seeing this? Now I need to repeat everything on the other side. Of course, starting with the breakage. But you know, I just don't have the patience to put the guitar back on her neck and slowly take it off to watch it snap on its own. So instead, I'm gonna use some scissors to uh, start the process. I think that should suffice. There we go. Now there's a very good chance that I had that way too close to the camera and we saw nothing, but I'm sure you can imagine a peg falling off. If not, here's an instant recap for you. Excellent. Now that that's taken care of, it's time to file down that little piece of leftover peg. 
All right, that looks good. And now we drill. The trick is to go nice and slow until you are absolutely positive that there's a hole forming. And then you can go a bit faster. And there you go, we've got a hole. But of course, I still need to widen mine just a bit so that I can actually fit my screw in there. Viola! And now the moment of truth. Insert the screw and ever so slowly tighten it with my mini Phillips head. I definitely don't want to crack the plastic after taking all that time to move so slow and steady. Hey! There you go. And it looks like they belong on this guitar. I am impressed with myself. But before I can call this project a success, I'm gonna have to make sure of two things. One, can it still fit inside the guitar case? Yes, yes it can. And two, I did not know that the ribbon was double-sided. Now I like this even more. Will the strap work with the new screws? Here we go. Top one is on, and now the bottom. And the answer is again, yes. Heck yeah, bud guitar drop. Hooray, I love success. Awesome. Now before I do any more damage, I'm just gonna pop this on Uma and we can continue. So Harley's hair is long and straight. It's definitely a bright neon green. And depending on where you look, there's actually a few different shades, which includes a very pale green, bright lime green, and black hair at the nape of her neck. Right away, I can tell you that it does feel very soft in the areas where she does not have product, which would be at the the back of her head, but I did have a lot of shedding and there is so much product at the front of her hair. It's literally like she was dipped in glue. So the moment I'm done filming, I'm going to be washing all of this out and giving her a trim. She does come wearing a barbed wire silver cat ear headband, which is currently attached with three bits of black thread. So if you're not a fan, you can go ahead and snip those off, but I like them and they're not really going to get in the way when I'm trying to wash her hair because they're not made of fabric. So I'm I'm just gonna leave them. And we've got some safety pin earrings. There's a little S on the right ear and an H on the left. And then at the bottom of each one, there's an S and an H. And on top, we have little Versace inspired heads, just like the ones that were on the Rainbow Diva's luggage. She's got a pale green complexion with a bit of a shimmer, green exaggerated eye makeup mixed with white. And of course we can't forget the faux lashes. And it looks like she has heterochromia or two different colored eyes. On the right side, we've got gray, purple, green, and blue. And for the left one, we've got green and purple, which is kind of awesome. And then she's got big full lips, which are black and fade to a green in the center. And we can see her little teeth there. Straight from the package, she does come wearing an oversized hoodie. It is mixed colors with green sleeves covered in silver studs. And this part here has a black chest section with matching hood. Then we've got some ribbon that says shadow in white with buckles going across it. And they go completely around her back and cross each other in the front. And on the front of the sweater, we've got some silver lettering and a cartoon cat, which seems to be on all the neon shadows stuff. And the picture is pretty much gray, black, and white, excluding the cat's green shoes and mohawk. And she's got a silver embroidered safety pin and a decent sized pocket. You could even pop her thumbs in there. Oh, and she's got some long green painted nails. Her shorts are pretty much the exact same as Nicole's were, except they are gray, green, and white striped. Basically tight bicycle shorts. She's also wearing some long white socks with green stripes along the top and a long black pair of Converse style boots with white lacing going up the front. So the bottoms are painted and the bow section is string wrapped around her leg a few times before being tied up. Now, personally, I think it's really cool to have these long strings wrapping around her boots, but they kind of just look way too big and they keep coming undone. So once I fix everything up to my liking, I'm probably going to create a nice small bow with trimmed laces and then hold them in place with a dot of fabric glue or even super glue because we are able to slide these on and off without untying them. And I think it would just make them look better. They've got white bottoms and even say shadow down there. And unfortunately my paint job is not the greatest on her shoes. So I'm definitely gonna fix that up as well as the corner here on the top of her left boot where we've got this white area with a black S and H. But these are minor things and I'm not really concerned because I like to paint. 
especially when it's something easy. Down at the bottom on the sides, we've got little circular smiley faces of white, and the back has a green painted section that says shadow. And you know what? Even though I wasn't 100% Team Harley before, I gotta say, she's pretty gorgeous. So now that I've removed these, I can just let you know that the quality is good, which means we can try on her second outfit, which comes with some pants. And these ones are a light gray tannish color, covered in the same cartoon cat with little hints of green thrown in. We've got a giant SH going right across the front with some little belt loops and pockets. And on the back, we have two big pockets with some black and green embroidered SHs. And these look great, by the way. And at the very bottom back here, starting on one side, going to the other around her ankles here, it says, see you in the shadows. And what? What are these? Oh, they're stockings, but we're not gonna be able to see them under the jeans. This would have been really cool with like a skirt or something. Well, I don't care. Either way, these are really nice and they're probably the best made pair that I've come across yet. And for her top section, we've got a neon green mesh and sequined cropped tank top that has black and silver embroidered straps and it looks really good. And before I forget, I just wanna quickly show you her coat. It is super soft and fluffy in this white color covered in neon green and black writing. It says shadow high around the collar, but I'm finding it a little difficult to focus on what's written all over the coat because different parts overlap, but I can definitely see a few anti spark in there and some shadow highs. I think there might even be the word rock here. And not only is it really nicely made and soft, but I'm surprised to see that the inside has a satin liner with writing all over it and even a little SH tag. And then of course, we've got her new boots, which are actually really cool looking. These ones are shorter and very punk. So they're all black with some silver details for the toe and heel, the buckles around the ankles and a ton of studs. And then we've got the coolest part of these, if I'm being honest, some bright neon green laces, which are actually laced up around real sticking off pieces. I don't even know how else to describe that because I'm just so excited. These look so cool. And now it's time to get her dressed. Starting, of course, with stockings and pants. And while I'm here, we'll just go ahead and pop those shoes on her too. Next up, we have her shirt. Wait, the Velcro definitely doesn't meet up. Is it too high? No, that still doesn't work. Is it too low? No, I can't for the life of me make this meet up. And what's going on with her strap? Oh my gosh, I thought this was so nicely made. Okay, so on the right side of her body, the strap fits perfectly. So I know I've got it in the right spot, but on the left here, there's just so much excess. It's kind of just sticking up. Well, dang, I'm gonna have to find a way to fix that. It's not gonna be too difficult. I'll just have to cut, shorten, and stitch the strap back on and then add some Velcro to the back of the shirt. But I mean, this is not my most excited voice, if you know what I mean. But luckily, I still have her furry jacket. So I'm gonna pop off her hands and stick it on her so that we can cover up all of the things that I don't like about her crop top and then pop her hands back on. By the way, she's got long green painted nails because I think I forgot to say that. And there we go. I'm stunned, honestly. When this second look was in the packaging, I thought the pieces look nice, but I don't know how much I'm gonna like this. And once again, just like Harley herself, I'm very surprised at how much I do. Overall, this second outfit is perfect, excluding that tan tank top and I really like it. Possibly even more than the first outfit. Hold on, let's give her her accessories. Yeah, she looks good. <laughs> okay, so that's it for Harley. I'm gonna put her to the back so that we can move on to the other bandmates. So next up, let's take a look at Mara, who's got super long and crimpy pink hair. It's a very nice color actually. Reminds me quite a bit of neon. <laughs> Ah, there it is! Which seems to work with their band's name. It all makes sense. Of course, because she's got the crimpy wave here, she's got product in her hair, but it definitely did not do her any favors because her hair is just awful. <laughs> and that's everywhere, guys. So in the front here, we've got some definitive lines from where she was stuck in the box with those jibbers holding her down. And in the back, she's got a huge split so that her hair looked nice and full on the sides. But to be fair, that makes a lot of sense. It's pretty pretty standard. Needless to say, she is definitely going to need a wash and restyle. But other than that, it seems to be okay, or at least for now. And underneath her hair, she's got some big transparent neon hoop earrings. 
She also comes wearing this black plastic cat ear hat covered in studs and safety pins with a silver painted word shadow right across the front. And this is held onto her head in the same way that Ruby's or River's was with a peg and hole system. So you could remove it if you weren't a fan. Wait, what? Or not? Ah, ow, that really hurt. Um, okay, never mind. I guess we're gonna leave it on. Oh, ow, cramp, cramp. Uh, back in a second. All right, continuing on to the rest of her appearance, she's got a very pale skin complexion. It is pink and kind of ghoulish looking. I don't know if it's the shape of her eyes or her makeup, but she kind of just looks a little ill to me, like she should see a doctor. And unfortunately, I'm not sure how well it's gonna show, but I do have some staining on her face, but it's most noticeable just in the corner of her mouth here. I might be able to get rid of it with a magic eraser though. Either way, she's got some super bright pink brows, gorgeous blue eyes, faux lashes, on top, painted mascara below in white and black, and of course loads of pink makeup for her blush, lips, and of course her eyes, which also have a bit of shimmer there. And the eyeliner looks really cool. We have both black and white directly on top, and the wing kind of turns into these little lightning bolts on the side. Straight from the package, she comes holding silver drumsticks, so I'm just gonna take those out of her hand. And look at that, we get a better view of her long pink nails now. All right, before we can check out her first look, I'm just going to tie back her hair because it's annoying me, it's getting everywhere. And I mean, I'm not really at risk of ruining it, am I? By the way, I'm not sure if it's just my dolls or what, but their heads seem to do whatever they want. I'll tip it this way. She's like, nah, I'm feeling the center. <laughs> it's really not a problem until you're trying to take pictures because she just keeps looking away, casting shadows. But she's from Shadow High, so I guess it all makes sense. And for her outfit, she's got a little pink jean jacket with a shadow patch, an SH patch, and an embroidered safety pin on the front. And on the back, it says anti-sparkle in black, and it's fringed at the bottom. And underneath, she's wearing a black dress with some silver studs, embroidered safety pins along the bottom, and a cartoon cat on the front, along with some Japanese characters. And once again, for the most part, it's kind of black, white, and gray, with a bit of color for a pink dress and light pink heels. And finally, her look is finished off with some long pink fabric boots that say shadow all over in white writing. So overall, I do like this look. I think it's pretty adorable, but of course, I still need to see her in her second outfit, which is a two-piece look. So first up, we've got a mixed fabric jacket of black pleather and pink plaid. We've got a faux zipper in the front going right up to the lapels and big collar and a ton of patches all over the right side, which are really well made. Hold on. Can I show them off a bit better? Let's see. Yeah, there we go. So right on the chest, we've got a shadow high patch with a big pink S in the center and a safety pin going through it and a 2022 patch. And then on the right sleeve, we have six more. That's quite a bit, oh my gosh. So right on top, we've got a super cute black and white cat, a hazard symbol, another cat cartoon with a pink and black mohawk, a shadow high 2022 patch, an I love shadow rock patch. And then right at the cuff, we've got a pink and white patch that says Eclipse. They both have a bit of a zipper and a zipper pull, but the left sleeve doesn't have any patches. Inside the jacket, we've got a white and black shadow high label and a nice black satin lining. It's really well made. And the back is mostly the pink plaid fabric, except a little piece of black at the bottom. And in some fancy gothic silver writing, it says Shadow Rock. I really love this jacket. Next up, we have a dress that looks like it's two pieces, but it is in fact just the one. So it's a neon pink pleather dress covered in studs literally all over and it's connected in the center by a piece of bright pink mesh. There's no mesh liner inside but quality wise it looks great. However we learned with Harley that looks can be deceiving so I'll have to try it on her before making a final decision. But of course we can't do that until we looked at her boots which shouldn't take long because they're just a mid-calf length black pleather boot covered in silver studs with some neon pink platformed heels jacket was good. So I'm going to take all of these off. And it looks like these pieces are as well. Fantastic. All right. And now back to dressing her. Starting with the dress. We got to make sure it closes up. Oh gosh. Oh gosh. Oh gosh. It's getting stuck on her bum. Come on. Come on. Get around that derriere. There we go. 
I was worried for a second there. We definitely have to perform a bit of a contortionist act in order to put her arms inside the straps because we don't want to stretch them. But luckily, they've got some pretty fantastic articulation. It can be done. And hooray! I can actually do up the Velcro in the back. Fantastic! Now I'm just going to put her arms behind her, add her new jacket, give her her hands back because that's important, and pop on her new boots. And although I'd love to show you what she looks like with her hair down, I'm gonna leave it in the ponytail because sadly this looks better, at least for now. And just like that, Mara is ready in her complete second outfit. And you could definitely mix and match them, although one of those options gives you quite a bit of pink, like, uh, maybe it's too much pink actually. Luckily she doesn't have a pink cat hat, that might have made it a tad too much. I don't know, do you guys think this is overboard? Funny enough, looking through the camera, it doesn't look as bright and neon as it does in person. And if you add her instruments, oh boy, it's even more. So be prepared if you get her. As for Miss Uma, she has some long, beautiful blue hair mixed with some purple streaks. It's got big curls at the bottom and probably would go down to her feet if it was straightened. And just like the other dolls, there is a fair bit of product used to keep these curls in place. But they don't look all that good. They are definitely suffering from having been squished in the package, so I cannot wait to wash all of this out and clean them up. She does come wearing a hat, but hers is definitely not plastic or stuck inside her head with a peg, but it is held in place with a plastic jibber. So right in the front here, we've got a big silver plate that says shadow, and it's attached by two pleather straps, and under it, we've got some embroidered silver chain link. And the top of it has a big creepy looking smiley face with S and H as the eyeballs. And if we lift the brim of her hat, she's got some painted edges that match her hair color and she's the only one of the three dolls that do. So that's pretty cool. And if we move her hair out of the way, wow, that looks cute. We can see her earrings, which are a nice metallic silver. On the left here, we have a lock with S H on the front. And on the right, we have nothing, what? Oh, it's stuck in her hair. Hold on, hold on, that didn't happen. Mulligan. Okay, let's try that again. And on the right, she's got a little silver key. Wow, that's really cute. <laughs> Moving down, Uma has a very pale blue skin complexion and it looks so cute with her makeup, which looks pretty fantastic, by the way. She's got dark sculpted brows and a really nice mix of pastel colors for her eyeshadow. We've got a light blue and pink there with a bit of glitter. And we can't forget about her beautiful eyes, which are a nice purple pink color. She's got painted black lashes, big faux lashes, light blushing on her cheeks with a broken purple heart painted on the left side, and then big pink lips with a hint of silvery gloss. For her straight from the box look, she comes wearing a white mesh crop top underneath a cropped blue sequined black edged tank top with some mismatched pants that have purple plaid on the right and a blue purple and white for the left covered in zippers, ribbons, and buckles. Oh, and of course, she's She's got some pockets. There are two in the front and then she's got this big piece of black ribbon which is attached to her right leg and makes its way all the way across to her left leg. We've got little black pleather belt loops and belt with a big SH buckle in the front and then we've got some really low placed pockets. Like they're under her bum cheeks, but still functional. Oh, and by the way, she's got bracelets, two of them, one on each hand. I completely skipped over those. So on the right side, we've got a silver chain link. And on the left, we have a thin black one with silver spikes. And of course, some blue painted nails. And to finish everything off, she comes wearing some blue high heels that have black bottoms and a silver SH painted across the toe. Your girl's looking good. To be honest, I really like this one. But of course, we can't leave her in it. We need to see what she looks like in her second outfit, which is not only super cute, but also comes with three pieces. So first up, we have a mixed fabric styled trench coat. What? No, I don't know. Go with it. The main portion of it is a dark blue denim. And then we've got some black pleather sleeves covered in silver studs, a matching belt with a silver buckle, which is functional and some strips at the entrance to her pocket, and some super cute small black buttons along the right side. Oh yeah, and a lapel and big collar. <laughs> the inside has a blue satin liner and a white and black shadow high tag. Once again, this piece is very well made. 
And to go under her trench coat, she's got a white cropped tank with clear straps so that it looks strapless. And there's a super cute cartoon kitty on the front holding a microphone. And in the background, it says Hollywood Shadow. And this is paired with a layered styled skirt of blue, purple, gray, and silver plaid on top of black pleather. And the top layer is pleated with a split in the side held together with some black ribbon and small buckles. And inside we have a liner. Now, for the most part, this is very well made, except there's a lot of threads and they're coming off really bad because there's a lot of fraying here. So I'm gonna add a little bit of fabric glue or magical stitch serum of sorts to prevent this from continuing. By the way, this position is currently held in the fabric with two small jibbers here attaching the pleated skirt to the pleather one. And finally, she has some new black heels with an open toe style. So we've got some silver chain and fanciness going around the ankle with another little Versace inspired head there. Although this one looks like it's got pigtails, so it's sort of punking out. Then we've got a blue strap across the center of her foot with some silver details added on and a black strap across the toe with some silver spikes. And now it's time to get her dressed. So of course I'm gonna need to take off all of these clothes and give them a quick check since I'm here anyways. And I'm happy to report that everything looks good, which means there's nothing stopping us from putting on her new stuff. So let's pop on her new shirt and jacket. A smart person would have put the skirt on before the jacket so they didn't have to struggle, but oh well, it's me and this is what I do. I've also run into a problem. I was about to say I can't get her skirt up over her legs, but I am slowly getting there, so that's not really an issue. However, I didn't notice it before, but her skirt is not actually attached on this side whatsoever to the black section. So I'm not sure if that's a design flaw or if it's meant to look like this, but um, it's pulling apart, which is making it difficult to dress her. So I can't imagine that they wanted it to be completely separate. So if you got this doll, please tell me, is yours attached or not? Because check it out. There is blue thread going all the way here and then it goes down and is continued along, making me think it should have been attached there, but it's not. So that's really wonky and also making it difficult to dress her. But as long as I'm careful, I can in fact do it. So I'm definitely gonna have to sew that on myself because I really do feel like it's meant to be stitched, but luckily it doesn't look obvious that there's something wrong, if in fact that is wrong, if that makes sense. Hopefully you know what I mean. Anyways, I'm just gonna attach her belt like so. How cute is she? Or at least she will be if her earrings stop getting lost in her hair and subsequently the table. By the way, her pants stained her legs. I thought it was just fluff because all of them had fluff on their bodies once I took off their clothes, but she actually does have black marks all over her legs. And unfortunately I bought this doll a while back, so I can't claim any warranties or exchange her. So hopefully a magic eraser will take that off. Now I'm just gonna pop on her shoes. Wow, those were easier than I thought they'd be. And just like that, she's ready. And when her jacket is closed, she looks cute, but like too proper. Punky sophistication, that's what we're gonna call it. But then you open it up again, and all of a sudden, boom. Attitude Judy or Uma. Okay guys, that's it for me and Neon Shadow, our second band from Rainbow Vision. Once again, I did check out the Rainbow Divas in my last video, so make sure you watch that if you missed it and are interested in seeing any of those characters because they are gorgeous. And hopefully I'll be able to get my hands on our K-pop Royal 3 really soon because I would absolutely love to see what they look like in person. I just have no clue when that will be. <laughs> if you know somebody who would enjoy today's video because they like dolls, they love Rainbow High, or you just think they'd like my video in general, then please share it with them. And if you enjoyed it yourself, then please make sure you remember to comment, like, and subscribe. You can let me know down below what you liked or didn't like about today's video. Which of our three Neon Shadow characters was your favorite? And I know it's kind of hard because, oh, it's hard to say. But then again, do we really need a favorite? Like, is that an absolute requirement? Probably not. And I mean, in making these decisions, are we taking into account just the doll or what their accessories are too? Because I mean, you could really love the accessories from one doll and wish that they came with another. So I think those elements need to be separated. Like we don't need to pick one just because they have cool stuff. I'm gonna shush now. <laughs> I know, did she just say that? What a liar. <laughs> but I'm still gonna try. <laughs> ah. Anyways, as always, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.